let me just uh, start here uh, with the observation that the morning session very much focused on the national situation in Italy. So I actually find it more pleasant to be able to speak at the afternoon session, which is more, more focused on the different level of the governance. There are the uh, local authorities in here that will be speaking. There are the regional authorities, non-governmental actors, NGOs, and uh, also I think that this would be a right kind of a moment to introduce the European level of the governance to the picture. So let me just uh, tell you very briefly how do we envisage the green economy or in our world resource efficiency. What are the policies that are being developed and implemented at the European level and how are the member states being and of course the other stakeholders including you all of you being part of that. Well. One thing is very clear and has been repeated here right in the morning is that we cannot go on as we are going uh, currently. If we look, for example, at the situation in the Europe, first we use a lot of resources. The European economy has been built for centuries on the very cheap resources. We use 16 tons of raw material per person per year. And out of these 16 tons, we throw away six tons. And out of these six tons, the three tons are being landfilled. And we all know that the landfilling is a very tricky issue that is very sensitive, not only for the local level, but also for the regional, national, as well as the European level. The second thing is that we are still living in an illusion, and here I speak we as all the Europeans, because the data I'm presenting here are taken from the, uh, the Europe-wide surveys. We still live in, il in an illusion that the resources are cheap and abundant. That uh, basically there is no particular need to factor the costs of the resources in our economic thinking. However, in the last 10 years, so the beginning of this century, uh, the overall rate by which the real prices of resources increased is in the range of 300%. So we can see that resources are becoming a major part of our production costs and also, of course, of our consumption costs. Uh, for example, in the case of Germany, because there we have a quite recent data from the German industry, but I would be inclined to believe that the same would apply to the Italian industries as well. For the moment, 43% of their overall costs are the cost of the resources, and only 18% of the costs are cost of the labor. However, if we look at our taxation systems, we are very much focused on the label, on the labor. And uh, of course, this has the, uh, the, the reason that the labor has been the main driver of the, of, the, of, the, of the growth. However, these days, it's not any longer so. The main driver is the technological change and innovation and the main cost of our productions of our economies is actually becoming the resources. And the most important thing which I wanted to say at the beginning is that the Europe is actually the continent that imports more than half of the materials it uses. And uh, Europe has the world's highest net import per resources per person. And our dependencies are increasing. For example, in the case of the precious metals that are necessary for any high-tech industry, more than half of it is being imported and we are exposed in some cases to, uh, to, to volatilities and need to face uh, various shocks. Now, uh, the, la the consequence of uh, what uh, I have uh, uh, said is that 
one of the consequences is that actually the prices which we are using in our economies are not at the moment reflecting the real value of the resources because our habit is to use natural resources for free. So this has both the external dimension as well as an external dimension because we still consider that the water is there for free, but however, what we are facing is not just the problem with the shortage of the water, but also with the wastewater. Regarding the biodiversity, which is uh, something which is very rarely accounted for in the economical thinking is that, for example, we have bees pollinating our crops. However, the, the, recently the population of the bees declined and there has been already some repercussions for the agriculture in Europe. We have the forests that uh, serve as a natural uh, barrier against the floods. They have a multi-function purposes. However, in the European forestry still, the forests are in a way seen mostly as the wood producer and wood supplier. So in a way, it's a very global systematic issue of not being able to factor in the natural resources into our policy and into our thinking. Now, what does the uh, DG Environment or the European Commission proposes to, and what, 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 what is done to make the green economy work? Well, in 2011, we came with the political communication on the resource efficient Europe, where, which for example, outlined the need to value the natural capital, which uh, outlined the need to externalize the costs of the use of the resources, which has put a lot of emphasis on the waste, that waste actually doesn't need to be a burden, but the waste may actually become an asset as the secondary raw material. We uh, have come up and are coming up with the initiative to consider the production cycle and the products as a part of the holistic life cycle where the products are being designed for reuse and recycling. And there are a few other initiatives, but I think at the moment there is no time to go into them in any detail. Now, as here in Italy, so at the European level, there are the political tensions between the standard classical economic thinking and let's say uh, the sustainable thinking. As we all know, in the case of the uh, environmental goods, like the clean air or clean water, uh, the public benefits are diffused, so they're basically benefiting each of you. But however, there are immediate concrete costs to some producers, to some factories, that need to take care that they are not polluting. In terms of the health, for example, it's estimated that the quality of the air, the bad quality of the air in Europe is responsible or has a cost in the range of 40 billion euros. However, this is an estimation and even if we were to implement uh, the, and we are going to propose an ambitious air pollution reduction policy, it will bring about the benefits in the long term However, there would be immediate costs starting with its implementation right from the beginning. And then we have the normal and I think well-known uh, dichotomies between the global, like the climate change, which is caused locally, but has a global dimension or the ozone layer and so on and so forth. Now, however, the basic question uh, which is being debated all, in all places in Europe, as far as I can see, is to what extent actually is environment to be seen as the growth or anti-growth agenda. And that's where the resource efficiency or the green economy, call it as you wish, comes in. Because uh, what we are saying is that the environmental problems, as they are 
standing ahead of us today, actually just needs to be translated, and it's not difficult to do, into the economist language, where the things which we considered to be a non-costed items, like the common land, like the ecosystem services, like uh, clean air, actually needs to be factored in for their value both to the production cycle and the uh, society at large. Now, with the, with the economic crisis coming or being you know, in place, uh, intensifying since 2009, the EU has developed a new system of the macroeconomic governance. It's called European Semester, and it's basically a continuous dialogue with uh, 28 member states. And uh, as, you may, as you may know, in the case of the uh, countries that have adopted the euro, which is also the case of, of Italy, uh, in the framework of the European semester, the countries need to submit to the European Commission their annual budgets for review. And then the Commission reviews the national budgets and looks at them in the light of the European semester exercise. Now, the European semester exercise will start the next cycle, the 2014 cycle, will start actually quite shortly on the 16th of November, when the Commission will present the annual growth survey, which is a kind of a EU-wide document about the main uh, challenges ahead of the member states. And then, until April, the Commission will engage with the member states, including Italy, into very intensive dialogue on the national reform programs. The national reform programs will outline what the member state is willing to do about the identified shortcomings and deficit. And then the discussion should more or less lead to a country-specific recommendations that will be issued by the European Commission in June. So that's basically, that's basically the skeleton of the, of, the, of, the, of the cycle. It's, as I have mentioned, uh, quite a binding exercise because it's both linked to the Euro governance and it's now also being more and more linked to the cohesion and the structural funds. Now, uh, the part of that governance package at the European level is also at the environment. So the question is, how can we make the environmental policy and principles part of the overall coordination of the economic governance in the member states? And the starting point here is that actually the environment and whatever policy we brand under this name is good for growth and jobs. Because although we have a short-term costs, this will, in the longer term, actually mean savings. For example, air pollution abatement measures will lead to much lower rate of the hospitalization, will lead to much lower pressure on the national healthcare systems. Green infrastructure will actually or can take up the function which would be normally, let's say, in the flood defense, which would be normally, if it would be done by the gray infrastructure, be very costly. Another principle which we are promoting is that at the moment, we should really use the crisis as the opportunity and we should really not be regretting any new measures being taken. So for example, banning the landfilling, which may seem to be a rather harsh measure, although six of the 28 member states already have a zero landfilling of the waste, actually is not going to be any dramatic measure at all because it will 
in the end of the day, encourage recycling market, it will bring, boost up the eco industries, and it will actually bring the income, additional income into the government <coughs> budget. Another issue that is being uh, hotly debated are the environmental harmful subsidies, which are at the end of the day nothing else than just the disturbance of the level playing field. And last but not least, the tax reform. Uh, as I have said already in the reality, the most of the costs these days relate to the material rather than the labor part of the production. So we would like to have an adjustment also in the, uh, in the tax systems in a way that the uh, pollution will be taxed rather than labor. Now, at this graph, you can see the uh, environmental taxes as the percentage of all taxes. It's a, a little bit uh, outdated data from the 2008, but uh, at the moment, I don't have uh, any, 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 any newer. And you can see that actually, even in the case of, uh, of Denmark, the overall taxation or the environmental taxation is only in the range about 5% and most of it anyway goes to energy. So the environmental taxes at the moment as they are perceived and implemented in the member states are mostly energy taxes. Now, what we are proposing and following the examples of some member states is that there is a lot of room to shift the tax burden from labor to pollution. So for example, the draft budget of the Netherlands for the next year includes four environmental taxes on drinking water, landfilling, motor vehicle road, and CO2 limits. And it's estimated that these four additional environmental taxes will generate some 750 million euro a year. Now, to mention another country, the French budget, draft budget for 2014, includes ecotax measures that are linking energy taxes more closely to CO2 content, and thereby they are giving preference to low emission cars. Another tax is actually tax on the nitrate fertilizers, and it's estimated that these two taxes will bring about two and a half billion a year to the French budget once fully implemented. Sorry for timing, but yeah. So in the case of uh, Italy, what has been uh, pointed out by the European Environmental Agency that is com 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 uh, completing the statistics on the behalf of the EU, is that there is a huge potential for phasing out environmental harmful subsidies. And this potential is in the range of 6 billion euro a year. Now, last but not least, when we are talking, when we are discussing the environmental policy, we should really discuss it not as the environmental policy per se, but also in the terms of the health and the employment. So for example, in Malta, there is uh, quite a high level of the air pollution. However, when this problem is seen in the context of the transport, energy, environment, climate, and the regional policy, and when this is linked to the cohesion and the structural funds under the new uh, programming period 2014-2020, we can get a completely new comprehensive approach and we are encouraging all member states to take that route. Now the eco industries unfortunately are still behind, far behind their potential, but there is no time now to talk about that. The same is uh, for example the area which can, there can be a rapid improvement is the recycling of municipal waste. 
Now, what we want to do as the EU is by actually discussing with the member states in the, within the semester cycle, which I have described, that they can use both the national policies and the EU funds to structural and economic reforms and job creation while also producing an environmental benefits by, do, by, by, by this approach and by also liaising with the stakeholders, the widest possible range of the stakeholders. I'm very glad that so many different levels of the stakeholders are here. We are trying to, in a way, put together a more comprehensive European level environmental policy package that will be part of the major kind of exercise that the EU is doing with its member states in the framework of the economic or let's say general political governance. And here just a, a table which shows that what are the linkages and what are the win-win situations for the environmental policy goals if they are linked with the other policies and the broader issues. So whatever environmental issue we look at, we are always able to frame it in a wider context and therefore I think this is the way that the environmental policy will be progressively more streamlined into main, mainstream economic governance policy of the, of the EU. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you.